Hello and welcome. My name is John Gross. I'm a bone and soft tissue pathologist at Johns Hopkins University. Here we have case number 11, uh, which is an adult who complained of knee pain. The, the patient uh, received a plain film radiograph. Here we have this rather large radio density around the left knee, uh, shown here, this uh, real dense, compact, white, fluffy um, component. Um, to further characterize this radio density, additional imaging was performed. Here we have a CT scan in the bone window, the left with a sagittal slice and the right with an axial slice. On the left, this radio density appears to arise from the distal uh, femur posterior cortex uh, and is predominantly blastic or sclerotic with a little bit of lytic areas centrally. On the right, you can see that this uh, mass is arising from the posterior cortex in the distal femur. And again, it has some lytic area centrally, but is a predominantly a sclerotic or blastic radio density. Because of the concern for PAR, PAR, PAR osteosarcoma, the specimen was resected. And here we have a uh, preoperative um, radiograph image paired with the specimen radiograph and the gross specimen showing this uh, radio density, which and how it correlates with the gross photograph here. A um, higher power view of this specimen shows this uh, large tumor mass arising from the posterior cortex and is this uh, dense um, bone forming uh, or dense uh, tumor here, which is continuous with the posterior cortex. At uh, Histologically at low power, this is a chondroosseous tumor grown in these lobules. Various areas have uh, relatively uh, well-formed bone and other areas are uh, relatively uh, uh, intermediate or, or hypocellular hyaline cartilage. Um, other areas are more fibroblastic with this um, pink posicellular spindle cells uh, with areas of this um, very well-formed bone um, uh, that can be seen here. Some of the uh, more intermediate power views shown in this hyaline cartilage, as well as some of the fibroblastic uh, components of these spindle cells, which directly produce this bone. Uh, focally, the spindle cells are mildly pleomorphic uh, and mitotic activity was quite rare. So this is a osteosarcoma variant known as PAR, P-A-R, PAR osteo, osteosarcoma, which is one of many different variants of um, osteosarcomas. So I'd like to briefly review with you the osteosarcoma variants. And to do this, we'll begin with conventional osteosarcoma. So conventional osteosarcoma is the most common subtype um, of osteosarcoma. And in that, or uh, we have osteoblastic osteosarcoma shown here with these um, primitive uh, and variably pleomorphic malignant cells directly producing mineralized osteoid matrix seen on the left at intermediate to high power and on the right uh, at uh, uh, even higher power. These pleomorphic and anaplastic cells directly produce this um, osteoid matrix here, which is very fine and lace-like. Uh, which is what we need to see in order to make the diagnosis of an osteosarcoma. Um, here's a collage of various subtypes at the top left with a fibroblastic um, osteosarcoma showing this uh, relatively bland, variably uh, pleomorphic spindle cell predominant tumor with various um, spicules of more well-formed bone without osteoblastic rooming. The top right is an example of telangiectatic osteosarcoma with uh, blood-filled cystic spaces and pleomorphic um, spindle cells and anaplastic cells that can be seen. The uh, 
amount of osteoid production in telangiectatic osteosarcoma may be quite focal and is often um, necessary to correlate with radiographic imaging. The bottom left is an example of chondroblastic osteosarcoma, which is surrounded by uh, more fibroblastic foci. And the bottom right is an example of giant cell rich osteosarcomas in the, with these malignant um, uh, and primitive cells directly producing osteoid matrix, as well as associated with these large uh, multinucleated osteoclast like giant cells. Uh, here's a photomicrograph of small cell osteosarcoma on the left with an intermediate to low power view of these uh, primitive cells with all of this uh, purple to pink uh, matrix production that can be seen better on the right. Uh, that is, this is mineralized osteoid uh, and a very wispy lace-like uh, uh, matrix production again, which is what we need to um, see in order to make the diagnosis of osteosarcoma. And finally, another very rare variant of osteosarcoma is chondroblastoma-like osteosarcoma. On the far left, you see this uh, purple matrix mineralization in an otherwise quite pink tumor. Uh, and then on, on the uh, right side, you can see these um, epithelioid uh, neoplastic cells that are uh, variably kidney bean shaped. Some of them even have grooves resembling a chondroblastoma. However, this is a tumor that's mitotically active. It's aggressive clinically and radiographically, and it also has uh, mineralized osteoid production here. This is a very rare example of chondroblastoma-like osteosarcoma. Osteosarcoma um, is the most common non-hematopoietic primary bone tumor with a bimodal age distribution in patients younger than 20 and greater than 60 years of age. Osteosarcoma generally occurs in the metaphysis of long bones, uh, generally or most commonly in the knee, but it can affect any bone. Radiographically, osteosarcoma uh, may be seen as a ill-defined mixolytic and blastic uh, neoplasm you may see a Codman's triangle, which is when the periosteum is lifted by the elevation of an advancing tumor front. Osteosarcomas generally grow rapidly, which is uh, different than what is seen typically in chondrosarcomas, which are generally uh, slower growing and more indolent tumors. Osteosarcoma, as we've discussed, is defined by the production of uh, malignant cells producing osteoid directly, which is often lace-like. It often uh, it lacks osteoblastic rimming. Osteosarcomas uh, often are invasive and have permeative growth. Um, the majority of osteosarcomas uh, should be treated with preoperative chemotherapy. There's a couple of subtypes, one of which is what we're talking about right now, PAR osteosarcoma. Um, uh, does not need preoperative chemotherapy, but uh, most osteosarcoma variants uh, should be treated with preoperative uh, or neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Lung is the most common site of metastatic disease. Uh, the prognosis of osteosarcomas is variable with conventional osteosarcoma, roughly 50 to 80% survival. However, the lower grade osteosarcoma variants um, have a much better prognosis of greater than 90% survival. So uh, as we mentioned, parosteal osteosarcoma is a low-grade osteosarcoma, uh, typically seen with these well-formed bone trabeculae, uh, maybe fibroblastic or chondroblastic. Um, the parallel trabeculae um, of bone lack osteoblastic rimming. Uh, there will be minimal to moderate cytologic atypia and rare mitoses. Uh, parosteal osteosarcoma will have MDM2 amplification and it may de-differentiate, which when de-differentiation is seen, um, that's the most important prognostic parameter. Um, our case did not have any evidence of de-differentiation. In general, par osteosarcoma has an excellent prognosis with uh, greater than 90% overall five-year survival. Uh, and chemotherapy is reserved for de-differentiated tumors only. 
Here's a uh, high power view of these parallel trabeculae of bone lacking osteoblastic rimming and these bland um, fibroblastic spindle cells. We may have uh, variable mitotic activity, but the mitotic activity is generally quite low. And here's an example of a different patient with um, a par osteosteosarcoma, see in the top right, um, an example of uh, what MDM2 fish gene application looks like. And uh, Finally, here's one more uh, photo, again, of a different patient, but uh, the same diagnosis of par osteal osteosarcoma here that we um, saw recently at Johns Hopkins University. Thank you.